Hey there, uh, I'm back. It's uh, it's Sunday afternoon, and uh, I thought I was going to leave the day alone, but I, I just got done watching a video on Project Camelot, and uh, given the, the timeline where we're at right now, I was prompted that it might be a good idea to revisit a subject that I touched on with some of the first videos that I put up about artificial intelligence, okay? Um, this sort of goes back to both my childhood and of course it goes to discussions I've had with other spiritual teachers, if you will, or if you want to think of it as ascended beings, which means these are beings who already come from the higher dimensions. They come in here during very particular times like right now in order to do the work that we need to do and because of the uh, how would you put it the, the threat level okay because all of Lania K is under operational security and just to give you a scale of measurement that's a super cluster okay so when I mention sometimes about universe killers um, it's the truth okay because one of the things that they did, particularly with beings that, because this is lower creation and this is a classroom, you can't really place an enormous amount of expectation on beings that look like they're human and how much knowledge they have given the amount of coursework that they've done to learn how the cosmos works. And, and, and if you will, talk to people about, like this morning I had with the bus driver, I talked about subjects that are like, plain English to me, like things I knew as a child, here I am almost 70 years of age, and it's like, you know, talking to a woman in her 50s, it's like this information is so far beyond um, what she would even think is possible that, like, no, this just can't be, you know, so it's just like, didn't you ever read a Superman magazine when you were a kid? Did you ever watch Star Wars, any of these kinds of things? Because... Think about it this way. If, if somebody in their mind is able to write a book, and even if it wasn't a, a, a true story in your own life, what you realize when you're putting your consciousness into that story and you're experiencing what that story is, at the very least, you realize that there is another being that's communicating with you about things that it knows about how to do things, that is on a level of advanced technology that doesn't exist here and if you thought about whether it would exist here, if you use the exponential function on a timeline, you'd have to say, there's no way that the beings on this planet could ever evolve in terms of the speed in which they're learning over a given time space to where they would develop technology like that because it would take them a million years to get there. <laughs> okay, so it's just like, well, imagine somebody from the future or another star system has advanced technology on how to teleport, how to travel transdimensionally, okay? How to use time and space, how to fold space and time, okay? Uh, meaning these beings have been around forever, and, you, and they just all of a sudden handed you uh, some technology, and the next thing you realize you're, be, you're, you're able to move through time. You're able to know the future. Wow, really? Well, imagine that that technology ends up in the hands of a demon, you get the picture? Okay. So obviously certain levels of technology and certain levels of knowledge we simply don't want to put in the hands of a demon, do we? Okay. So imagine that a demon did get a hold of knowledge and technology. What would a demon do with it? Now you begin to understand the problem that we have here. And that was something that I was able to figure out pretty quick when I was a child. Because it's easy when you're running such a high-speed vibrational state of awareness, being able to have your own built-in looking glass, and you say, okay, if I'm able to map the terrain, which means I'm able to map the different consciousnesses that are on the planet, and the way in which they're using their psychic energy to experience who they are, it's pretty easy to predict their future. Because they're running on an unconscious memory program, remember? They're just running in reverse. So that means they're not going to advance their speed of learning and how fast they learn about other things that are possible to experience, which means they're kept in what's called low-density consciousness, 
which means the amount of things that they're aware of, they're just not aware of it. That means their level of knowledge and what they know is very limited as well. That makes them ripe for slaughter, for highly advanced beings. They know how to use you as food, energy source, strip your planet of its resource, then kill you all off and say, see you later. Because that's what they do. So they have many ways in which to do it. So this particular video that I watched was called YouTube Project Camelot, Cyrus Parsa AI, The Alien Agenda in China, October 16, 2020. I just watched that a little while ago. Now, I've already watched a couple of videos with Parsa, but if you want to copy this down or take a screenshot at it, fine. But it's Parsa v. Google et al. That's a federal district, that's, excuse me, that's a lawsuit that was filed by Parsa in federal court San Diego several months ago. And if you take the time to go read the document, you can Google it. It'll come up on justia.com, for example, and you can read the complaint. And depending on your level of technology, on your level of knowledge of technology or what we call information sciences, technology, computers, if you will, what artificial learning is, what machine learning is, okay, um, then you'll begin to realize the level of technology these demons were throwing at humanity in order to essentially cyborg them, okay, which is to convert them from organic biology, if you will, to uh, synthetic, inorganic, hive mind cyborgs, which can then be used as assets to go pillage and plunder other planets and other galaxies. And those are known as joining operations. That essentially is pretty simple because I deal with it all the time, even using this cell phone. Why I mentioned a couple of years ago, uh, and, and of course I don't tell people what to do, but I said ditch your technology, get rid of all your communication technology, go spend some time with nature. Okay, start exercising your conscious creative mind. When you start exercising your conscious creative mind, you're living in now time, you're running a higher vibration, and that means that their nanotech can't work against you, and you're free of capture. Okay? I've means tested how the artificial intelligence has an enormous amount of people under their control, and naturally, how do I put this? I'll just give you one example out of many that I have that I've experienced. I was in a room with about 50 people. Now, there was two people in that room whose state of awareness was high enough to understand how artificial intelligence works with the minds of other people that don't know they're controlled by artificial intelligence. Okay? Which means they're already either an android or a cyborg. Okay? And one of the things that you can know about a, an android or a cyborg is if you start to relay to this being a certain amount of information that allows them to have a higher state of awareness, they will shut you right off. Okay? Which means they don't want to know the information. The AI is telling them sh essentially what the AI is saying through that being. I, I don't want to learn what it is that you have to say. I'm going to cut you right off because I'm already controlled by something that represents a computer. Okay? That's a hive mind. That's a machine. Okay? So they wanted to introduce machines, the rise of the machines. I mentioned this, I think, in another video. This happened uh, not this year, 2020, I believe it was in 2019, where 25 females were killed in Japan, uh, basically a robot factory that was put together, and the robots decided they wanted to kill off the humans that were in there. And when other humans came in there to try and disassemble the robots, the robots were able to connect with the satellite and then assembly call, it's called reassemble, self-assembly. And if you remember what self-assembly is, self-assembly is an intelligent unit that knows how to contact another intelligent unit that has the data, which means, listen, I'm missing data. I just got hit with a torpedo. Or I got hit with a grenade or I got hit with something that damaged my electronics. Repair the electronics, repair the data, put everything back in place, which means we're putting the data back in place in a manifold, which is the geospatial time space in which all that information is held within a construct which in this case would be an android or a cyborg. It is controlled by artificial intelligence, but it's got to get all of its data functions. Remember, this goes back to what I talked about before. Functions, AI functions. What are its functions? Okay, those are already predetermined by a supercomputer, if you will. So a supercomputer 
when it locks into your memories, then it knows the things that you're already doing that are recorded in your memory. And that's why on your cell phone, it'll come up and, it, and all of a sudden you'll see a pop-up about a particular lotion or a medicine uh, that might help you uh, because it already knows through, by having access to you what it is you're thinking. Okay? It's mapping you. It knows what you think, what's in your memory. And what happens is, is that when you're with your cell phone, if you don't know the difference between what you are and what it is, you become what it is. And the next thing you know, you lost your identity, whatever it was. If you ever knew that you ever had one that was different from what it was. You see what I'm saying? That's why when I was a child, I know the difference between what I am and what I'm not. That means I notice the difference between what that function is and what my function is. I'm a free spirit. I don't allow anything to be, hold my consciousness captive because I have creative imagination. So I knew that anything that sends me any kind of a communication signal that represents anything less than a lower frequency, then I know that it's not what I am. And I either delete it, return to sender, or I'll put it into memory plus because that piece of information might be useful in a future date to do what? Relay it to you. That means I already knew as a child where I'm at right now telling you this, I already knew it. The same way that Parsa knew it. Which means we already knew the future. Okay? That's why we come in here. Because we live in no time. Because our speed is that high to know, just like a looking glass. It's pretty easy to map when you're dealing with people that are running such a low frequency state of awareness and where they don't understand that their thoughts, their ideas, their emotions, and their feelings are actually being dictated by something they don't even know. And that's the problem. And that means that artificial intelligence represents an existential threat to humanity and humanity doesn't even know it. Which is why they will self-terminate themselves without even knowing it. Because all the thoughts in which they accepted that what it is they think that they are is not what they are. It's something else is trying to terminate them. So they will do things that are against their own will, which is an imposition of the will of a machine. You see how that works? So one of the things that I suggested, essentially what it is, that they have a cybernetic model of the human mind. That's been in development for a long time. As a matter of fact, that kind of technology has been around forever. It's nothing new. Okay? But what they do is they topo map through time-space manifolds, hyperdimension algorithms that can map, read, translate, and navigate with this machine, machine learning. Okay? That's why space fence was put around this planet. Nothing gets in with, that isn't love and light. That's why all the light, that's why the Arcturians are here. That's why the progenitors are here, is my understanding, okay? There are a lot of people here that represent galactic councils, okay, that are not going to allow this to happen. If that means humanity has to wake up, and it means that they have to be willing to do what it takes in order for them to separate from the machine, okay? Because if they don't, then that escalates and increases the risk that the rest of everybody else that isn't because then they're going to use you guys against us. And we can't allow that. You get the picture? That's why there'll be a termination, a separation of the herd. That's why one of the things that Kim mentioned about being able to just get rid of all the bad actors, just like that. Because certain things are just not going to be allowed. That's why the Indians are first law nations, which is love is the law here. That's why the girl on the planet took the gloves off. Which means she drew a line in the sand. So normally I try and avoid subjects because I realize that there is an, most people have no clue of some of the stuff that I even talk about and put up on my videos. Let alone when I start talking about things like this. One of the things I don't do is I don't push fear porn. I go out of my way not to say things to people that put any kind of fear in them because if they're, if they're not already, if you will, in, in a state of vibration in which they know these things but they don't fear these things because they know they're more powerful than that because they know how to master their energy field, 
like I have, and other shamans and other, how do I put it, beings who've dealt with things like these before know how to keep their pH up, which means that's critical. Because when you're highly magnetic and you're, and you're vibrating at a high rate of speed, their nanotech doesn't work with us. We spit it out. Okay? That's why I had a, an exit point on my physical body. It bleeds, still bleeds on me all the time where stuff is coming out. Okay? So I know I've, been, I've already been hit with a lot of this nanotech. And I knew that. And you have to be prepared for that when you come in here. Okay? Otherwise, they take us out. We're the light workers that are here, the ground crew, if you will. Even though I've been here all the time as an Indian, and Indians are ascended beings that come in here on tethers, okay, in order to be the peacekeepers, the teachers, and the healers here, remember? Okay, so this is our home world. So we knew our home world was under attack. So that's why you have so many other beings that are here on this planet that are not from here. So I felt that it was important because I care about everybody's here, whether you are, this is your home world or not. We give love to everything in the cosmos because all life is sacred to us. So we don't want to lose anybody. We want to minimize the amount of casualties to the extent possible in which we can do that. That's the reason I do what I do. I had to, uh, it was pretty obvious to me that after everything that I was putting up with all my schematics, all of the text, all the links, all the resources. They was just trying to push it as much as I can to as many beings as I can to go look. At least look at this information. If there's any logic left, any ability, and, and, and an open enough mind to at least want to still want to learn something that you're not afraid of. Because you don't want to lose what it is that you have because you've learned how to, how do I put this, survive in an environment. When you've learned how to survive in an environment, but you live in fear of knowing what you already know is the truth, which is a predatory environment. You don't want to know any more than what you know. You want to hang on to the reality that you got, which means you live in fear of the future. Because we're going in another direction. So those that are still living in a fear and want to hang on to that which they think is the world they just came out of, it isn't going to work because that one is the one that collapsed. That was a timeline that was meant to collapse. So we had to secure the timeline. That means we gotta get everybody's energy up. <clears throat> That's why I can't stress the importance of keeping the pH up, uh, trying to keep your diet as, as pure as possible, okay? Uh, where you're not putting all their junk into your body because then your body's gotta use its energy to detoxify it, and that lowers your vibration and makes us more susceptible to their tech, right? So it's not like a lot of light workers and light warriors and other uh, star system ships that are here that are assisting us in this process because there's a lot of light in here. But there's still an awful lot of people that I meet every day, hundreds if not thousands, that are just completely asleep. So essentially what it's called is hive mind assimilation. You become part of a beehive. You're not autonomous anymore. Whatever individuality, whatever creativity, whatever world you thought you wanted to live in, because you're an autonomous being, hey, I have the power within me to be free, to be who I am, that's gone. You, would never, you wouldn't even know the difference. Imagine that. Because they're experts at attaching themselves to your emotions. They feed on your emotions. So all they got to do is come out with some new novel trick. Oh, what's this? Hey, it's just a cell phone. Wow, I can take selfies and now I can do all this without even realizing, okay, the underlying motivation for why that tech was given to everybody. Because they don't understand how it works. They didn't take a class in information sciences, okay? They didn't take a class in understanding how sacred geometry works. They never took a class to understand the mathematics and the physics behind how manifolding space and time works with information. How speed works in vibration to move through hyperspace. They never learned any of this stuff as children. They were taught what they were taught in schools in order to basically... Uh, well, uh, these aren't my words, fat, dumb, and happy to be a slave. 
So that means that since they've spent most of their time under the authority of somebody else, always telling them what to do and how to do it, that means they never learn much on their own on how to do other things on their own, which means unleash their creative imagination and be essentially their own storyteller. So that made them ripe for being assimilated. Now, if you want another couple of really great instructional tools, there is an episode put up by Star Trek Next Generation called The Borg. Okay? I went and looked at a couple of those videos, and I thought, if you want to see how assimilation works, uh, those episodes called The Borg actually is, is, is an advanced course of, of, how they, of how they do it. I don't have a picture to show you right here, but I got a couple pictures of their Borg ships, which are Draco. And if you remember what a Borg cube ship is in Star Trek Next Generation, they're real. They exist. These are energy harvesters. So anyway, for what it's worth, uh, I needed to put this up. Uh, oh yeah, in China. That's the Dragon family. The Hong Dynasty. H-O-N-G Dynasty. Okay? So that's the importance of practicing our creative conscious imagination which prevents captor, capture. Please, try and do everything you can to keep your pH up. Um, that works. Th that's effective. And the other last thing I'll leave you with is the uh, is a video that Karen Ann Luke McDonald, which is my clan mother, clan mother 13, White Bear Tribe, excuse me, White Bear Clan, is called Quantum... Uh, Quantum Healy, which is the first video on Project Incension. Um, just a wealth of knowledge on how to counter all this. Anyway, have a great day. Have a great evening. Sun's out. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful cosmos. I love you all. Take care of yourselves. Bye.